And before that, all the day's action in Match of the Day. Good evening. The FA Cup itself has been quite special this season. Tonight, I think we might have just seen two of the greatest FA Cup semi-finals ever. We're not exaggerating with this one at all. Newcastle United took on Middlesbrough at Old Trafford. This one was just an unbelievable game. Janino to Romanelli. Now Beck, chance of a counter-attack. Here's Festa. That's a nice ball, Beck. That's a lovely ball. This is it, Ravinelli. There was high drama at Villa Park. The two Premiership title challengers going for a place in the FA Cup final. This semi-final you can only describe as epic. Barnes. Now Michael Thomas. Lovely ball into Collymore. Collymore turns. Now McIntyre for Liverpool. What can he do? He finds Barnes. Couple of epic guests with us, Trevor and Trevor, joining us in the studio uh, this evening. But first and foremost, we'll go over to Old Trafford, where we're actually not going to cover Manchester United. It's the big game between Newcastle United and Middlesbrough. Now the two met earlier this season in the Coca-Cola Cup, and on that occasion, Middlesbrough came out victorious. On this occasion, though, it's a neutral venue. It's a sea of red and uh, black and white shirts. It promised to be a great game. What it delivered is one that will live long in the memory. Commentary for this one comes from Trevor Davis. For either side, it could be a season-defining moment. Newcastle United, dreams of the championship has faded away. But Kevin Keegan, a last chance silver remains in the FA Cup. For Middlesbrough, it's been a month of distractions. They may be disappointed in the Coca-Cola Cup, but a chance to reach the FA Cup final is certainly one that they're looking forward to for either side it's an incredible opportunity as derby days go and old trafford knows a thing or two about derbies and a thing or two about fa cup semi-finals the neutral venue for this venue middlesbrough today and brian robson who once made manchester united and old trafford his home for many years goes with a side of ravinelli and beck leading the line Janino and Emerson in the middle, Vickers and Pearson hoping to stop, £15 million pound Alan Shearer. And he's partnered by Festino Aspria as Kevin Keegan makes changes. Lee Clark comes into the right of midfield and Rob Lee goes over to the left. A lead for a lead it would seem. Cox into Jean-Luc Festa. The ball in which is picked up by Beck. 1-0, out of nothing. Out of absolutely nothing, Middlesbrough take the lead. Both these sides are fraught with defensive fragilities and it was exposed here. Gary Walsh, the former Manchester United goalkeeper, raising a hand to the Stretford end, which is filled with Middlesbrough fans today. Mikhail Breck gets the opening goal. And it's all from a very simple ball which was not dealt with. Albert and Peacock got in each other's way. I don't think there's too much Hislop could do about the effort on target in the end. It was so well hit. But Festa shouldn't have been allowed to get the ball in. It shouldn't have been allowed to reach back. But as it has, it is Middlesbrough 1, Newcastle United nil. about playing on these grounds. Here's Batty. Asprea. Beardsley. Up for the shot. Up for the goal. That 
absolutely Peter Beardsley. The captain's response. 11 minutes played, it's one apiece. Terrific effort from Peter Beardsley. Absolutely cracked it. No chance for Middlesbrough left. Oh, picked back. First time Cast United have pressed forward. Where was the marking on Beardsley? I don't think anyone. Castle United shirt will mind. One would be rather a brief to say who cares. What does matter is it's 1 0 and game on. Spria. Lee to Shearer. Oh, good save! But tapped in by Spria. Walsh got a hand to it after, looks like he dived the wrong way. And as Spreer was on hand, alert, the Newcastle United have turned this around. Oh, if ever there was a look of anguish on a goalkeeper. Could Walsh have done better here? Looks like he was wrong footed, I would suggest, in the initial effort. Upon doing so, it seems to fall down after initially saving the effort from Alan Shearer. I wonder if there was the slightest deflection off of Pearson. It's harsh on the keeper. Credit must go to the centre forward for being alert. Good finish. Fleming dispossesses it. Janino to Ramanelli. Now back. Chance of a counter attack. Here's Festa. That's a nice ball. Beck. That's a lovely ball. This is it. Ravinelli. And it wasn't quite the finish the counter-attack deserved. Excellent from Middlesbrough. Moving forward. What a ball this was by Festa. Beck, that was delightful. It just seemed to get stuck under his feet there, Ravinelli. Here's David Batty. Asprea! Well, he has looked the most lively player on the pitch for Stino Aspria. Really is responding, and that was unlucky. Swung in. Beck was there. Blackmore. Emerson. Oh, he's going to hit one! Good save, Hislop. Certainly capable of hitting him from range there, Emerson. Blackmore just tipped it back and Emerson that was flying really good stop in the end get behind that parry it away that's why he's preferred to Cernicek at the moment and the Middlesbrough fans are camped in the Stretford end this afternoon that is the end Middlesbrough attacking and Neil Cox got to it but headed it over just another warning sign for Newcastle that they really are under pressure now Many people have said with the run of form that Newcastle United have had, particularly that under Keegan, there was a trophy to be won by this side. They had their opportunity at Wembley. As things stands at the moment, it seems to be that the main advantage is that of Middlesbrough's. Unless... Oh, <laughs> unless... Middlesbrough leave themselves open and as Spreer has the chance what a ball this was but what about the defending and really that should have been finished Romanelli good work from Barton fair challenge and Shearer has played through as Spreer with the chance to seal it which he doesn't and it keeps things interesting I suppose Looked to be an excellent challenge from Warren Barton. Shearer with an excellent ball through. And Aspria, well, he really should have buried that. Nathan Blackmore. Fleming again to Blackmore. The two combining on the left. Blackmore's ball in. Oh, yes, it's there! It's back! It's game on now! And 
It's probably no more than Middlesbrough deserve. They have taken the game to Newcastle United. Who have had moments to kill this game off. Have not succeeded. With nine minutes to go, the late cross has flown in. Mikhail Beck has got there. And we are heading to extra time as things stand now. Blackmore and Fleming combining really for the first time in the match on the left-hand flank. The cross was a real difficult one to defend against. But nobody picked up Beck. Blackmore might know a thing or two about a good cross on these neck of the woods. Beck delighted. It was for a level. And then he might have just... Uh, picked up a knock and that's why he's off so Campbell replaces him on for Shearer to run into into the channel up against Pearson Beresford headed away by Vickers Beresford to Batty Beardsley oh he's not afraid to hit them Peter Beardsley and I think he's just won his team a corner in the area David Batty might have put Newcastle at Wembley swung in a fine fine finish excellent excellent bit of play the corner was floated in probably on the money here no one picked up Batty and the finish wow not beginning themselves though Middlesbrough now need to use something to get us to extra time again they won't have an hour to do it they have about a couple of minutes Janino oh it might happen it's Campbell it is there this is incredible absolutely incredible for the young man Campbell for Middlesbrough levels it up. It's 3 3. And who would have thought this? Well, it was a long ball, it was a hopeful. It certainly highlights again where Newcastle United have struggled defensively at the moment. But when the chance came, it was brilliantly taken. Andy Campbell is there. Here's Blackmore. Former oh, Manchester United, one should say. Fleming. Janino. Matty comes in. Ferdinand. Aspria. So lively, but seems to have got quieter as the game goes on. Can he get produce a little more noise? Let's see. This cross. Oh, there's Ferdinand! That is back to goal, had the chance to finish. Aspria finding a little bit of wiggle room to get involved. But there's Ferdinand's effort flying over the bar. Another key moment in this contest. We'll have 20 minutes or so. Janinho gets it back to Moore, fresh legs. Going to be a factor down that left flank. Here is Moore. This is Janino. Oh, brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! Magical moment. Middlesbrough leads. Amazing. And he's jumped straight into the fans to celebrate. An extra time moment, and you've got to say that's good managerial work by Brian Robson. Alan Moore has the pace, fresh legs, creates the opportunity, and he is absolutely loved down at the Riverside, Janinho. 
Egan had high hopes at the start of the year, but they have fallen short. It's looking like this was perhaps the afternoon they might not. Lee. Beardsley. Batty. Oh, Batty's ball in to Espria. And again, Les Ferdinand. Now a free kick right on the edge. It's worth pointing out we've only ever had 1-4-4 this season. Something of a treble sports phenomenon. It's the commentator tempting fate. There's Ferdinand has got the ball. He hits it. It's it brilliantly, and it takes a deflection. It flies in. It's four all. Goodness gracious me! What a phenomenal game of football this has been, and it's not over yet. Fifteen minutes to go. The jury faithful delighted, and rightly so. A phenomenal game this. There was the effort. It seems to take a deflection off back. When it does, it completely deceives Walsh. Have a look at this again. What on earth was Pearson doing? Three goes on. Janino. Not a great hit. It will be claimed easily by Hislop. Barton. Blackmore. Oh, what a sliding effort there from David Batty. Oh, he's off! Batty's off! Goodness me! Red card straight away. Looked to me it was a fairly... Oh, it was a wild challenge, but he won the ball. Aspria wins it. Ironic cheers from... Newcastle United fans to my right. Vickers. Campbell gets it back to Emerson. And now Andy Campbell in the edge area. What a delightful ball! Janinho! What a delightful goal! Magnificent! Oh, that is boys' own stuff! What a moment! Juninho is Middlesbrough's hero. And I don't think he's going to have to buy a pint down the riverside again. Everson balling. Look at this from Andy Campbell. Sucked three defenders into him. Juninho found the room. What a finish this was. Oh, this is going to be talked about for many, many a year. It's Middlesbrough's day! A second cup final to go. Heartbreak for Newcastle. Sheer delight for Middlesbrough. Who I think might have just won the best modern semi-final of all time. Nine brilliant goals in a phenomenal match. This had everything. And I mean everything. Extra time the works. Both these sides have put a real credit to themselves. The Cavan Keegan's Newcastle United. It's going to be a trophyless season. For Middlesbrough, it's a chance to win trophy after getting beaten in the cup final. Such drama awaits. Full time here, it is Middlesbrough 5, Newcastle United 4. Well, um, if every game was like that, um, football would, would, would be boring, wouldn't it? Because when they are that good, they are that good, aren't they? Oh, it's an excellent game. First and foremost, the defending was diabolical, completely non existent. But that just made for a great game, and both sides throw caution to the wind. No one really worried about trying to man mark and that. It was let's outscore one another. And that is everything that is great about football, and it showed here today. Um, I, I, it was great, wasn't it? Well, 
phenomenal, as uh, we'd have to say. Um, how did Middlesbrough win this, Trevor? An inspired change, Trev. They brought on Andy Campbell. He's not very well known, but he's a young player. He had some legs behind him. And he ran at a tired Newcastle United defence. Um, Brian Robson made the perfect substitution at the perfect time. And that's how they won this game. That was absolutely true. Well, Brian Robson certainly made a change. Uh, he's been talking to uh, us very quickly. Well, you know, I'm <laughs> very delighted for the lads and the performance. And we're so pleased that we've we've got ourselves back at Wembley. You know, we've got to go stay in this league. We know that we've got, you know, big four games coming up. Um, uh, and we've got to treat them like today. We've got to treat them like we're going to treat the cup final. And we've got to learn from our Coca-Cola cup final when we essentially froze. We've got to learn from that and we've got to drive ourselves forward. If we can do that, we stand a real chance. Well, that's uh, uh, Brian Robson's view. Um, what are your views on Middlesbrough's ability to stay up? Another cup final to look forward to? think if they can harness what they had in today which is their ability to take the op- the game to the opposition they'd be great they lack that in the coca-cola cup final and that's what they've really got to change around today if they could do that all the chance in the world that uh, uh um middlesbrough can stay up but yeah they've got to treat every game like a cup final and it's not easy to do no absolutely not well two sides that are not uh afraid of cup finals they met in the last one, would you know? Liverpool and Manchester United have gone toe-to-toe for the Premiership this season. And both are vying for the double. So something had to give. Manchester United, of course, just recovering slightly after that midweek trip to, to Europe. But they also know that uh, thrones on the domestic front still stand true. Commentary for this one comes from Trev Champion. Last year, these two teams faced off at Wembley. 11 months later, Villa Park is the venue for two of English football's fiercest rivals. Manchester United have won two of the last three FA Cups. Last season's victory over Liverpool coming courtesy of Eric Cantona's volley. Both sides are hopeful of more than one trophy in 1997, but right now, all eyes are on the oldest football competition in the world. Liverpool are the designated home team today, and manager Roy Evans has opted to pick three central defenders. Ruddock, Wright and Bab all start. McManaman will give Abel forward support to Messrs Fowler and Collymore. Carol Poborski scored a spectacular goal for his country on this ground in Euro 96. And here's a surprise name on United's team sheet. Cantona, Cole and Giggs are all absent from the lineup, with Alex Ferguson digging deep into his squad. Both sets of supporters have come in their thousands down the M6. The atmosphere is electric and it's time for the latest chapter between these two Northwest powerhouses to be written. Lovely ball out to Stig Inga Bjornaby for Liverpool. Here's McManaman. Charged down and Scholes comes away with it. Here's Solskjaer for Manchester United. Kaborski. Gets support from Nicky Butt. And that's a lovely ball to Poborski who made a, a run in behind Bab there. Gets the ball in. Header! Go! What a start for Manchester United! A wonderful header! Scored by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but it was Poborski who made it. Bab in awful positioning there. And Poborski was allowed to cross. And Solskjaer heads home at the halt end. United are ahead. Alex Ferguson couldn't have asked for a better start from his side. Lovely ball by Butt. Kaborski here brings it down and it's a wonderful cross. But Solskjaer gobbled up. James beaten and United are ahead. Kaborski's ball in. Wonderful header. 1-0 Manchester United. Barnes. Now Michael Thomas. Lovely ball into Collymore. Collymore turns. Now McAteer for Liverpool. What can he do? He finds Barnes. Fires wide, does the captain. But a first real opening for Liverpool to get on the score sheet today. McAteer's ball in. Barnes's first time strike. Not troubling Schmeichel though. Here's McManaman, 
Liverpool. Good ball in. Good effort. Drifts wide. Stan Collymore acrobatically getting on the end of that one. And just for a moment, you did wonder whether that was going to be Peter Schmeichel. Back it's here. Liverpool putting on the pressure early on in this second half. Thomas. Lays it back to Jason McAteer, the Ireland international. McManaman, what can he do? He let's fly and tipped away by Schmeichel. Picked up by McAteer. Good ball in, headed away. McManaman with his first real opening there. Comfortably saved by Schmeichel who palmed it out of danger. Mark Wright intercepts and now Liverpool are on the attack. Michael Thomas, Collymore, what can he do? Good defending there. Barnes out to sticking Yornaby. He's got Beckham up against him. Yornaby. Barnes. John Barnes. Narrowly wide from Barnes. A veteran these days. He's seen it all. And he nearly scored for Liverpool there. Not charged down quickly enough. Schmeichel is at full stretch. Here's Solskjaer. Into Scholes. Paul Scholes gets away from Ruddock. Now Beckham for Manchester United. David Beckham into the box. Good defending though. And clear by Ruddock towards Fowler. But Gary Neville gets there. And Beckham again for United. Gets his cross in this time. Oh, what a chance that was. Paul Scholes, six yards from goal. Really should have done better. Beckham's cross was delicious. And Scholes got it all wrong. Fowler. Fowler for Liverpool. That's it. Get it away, but only momentarily. Here's Bjornaby. Bjornaby's cross is a good one and it's just over from Collymore. Liverpool getting closer and closer here to pulling level. Bjornaby's cross in. Collymore got his head onto it but couldn't keep it down. May to Gary Neville. Beckham now. Good one-touch football from Manchester United and Beckham's away on the right-hand side. Berger trying to stay with him. He can't stay with him. Oh, what a goal. Oh, no. It really should have been from Solskjaer. It was a wonderful cross from Beckham. Superb football from Manchester United. And the FA Cup holders so close to going 2-0 up. But... Good ball to Paborski. What can he do? Carol Paborski. He's already set up one goal. Gets into the area. Now Nicky Butt will get onto this. But he's offside. And the attack breaks down. Well, it's so open now. Will there be another goal? That's the end of Nicky Butt's. Afternoon, Brian McClare coming on. What can Chockey do? Berger, the substitute, scored the winner in the last round. Liverpool need a goal here and it's Owler with the effort from long range. And it didn't seem to be that menacing, that effort. But Schmeichel got down and Liverpool have won a corner. Time running out for Liverpool now. Berger will get onto this though. He's up against Roy Keane. He can't get past Roy Keane. All Manchester United have to do is keep hold of the ball, but they've lost the ball. Barnes into Collymore. Thomas now. Thomas finds Collymore. 
He's now or never. Stan Collymore. Oh, brilliant defending. Brilliant defending. The headlines were written there for Stan Collymore. It's a corner. It could have been so much more. John Barnes will take it for Liverpool. He's decided to go short. Barnes with the cross in. Can they get the shot away? Yes, they can! Oh, my word! Steve McManaman has scored for Liverpool right at the death. Would you believe it? It looked for all the world that Collymore had fluffed Liverpool's lines. Barnes went short with the corner and McManaman was on hand to strike beyond Schmeichel and give Liverpool an FA Cup lifeline. Gary Neville didn't clear the ball and McManaman got on the end of it and found the back of the net. Real drama here at Villa Park. Steve McManaman has scored and it's one apiece deep into stoppage time. Well, that McManaman goal will live long in the memory. It's given us viewers 30 extra minutes. And here's McClare. He thought he was only coming on for three or four minutes. And that's a good ball in, just over. Solskjaer. Well, the Holt end has witnessed two goals so far. Probably should have witnessed another there. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer heads over James's bar. Barnes plays it back to Mark Wright. And now this is Collymore. Fowler. Barnes. Good ball into Collymore. Stan Collymore. His shot is blocked. And Schmeichel clutches the ball. Well, Manchester United thought that they had broke their spot in the FA Cup final. This semi-final is totally in the balance now. Bam. Into Barnes. Lays it off to McManaman. Now Fowler for Liverpool. Robbie Fowler, Collymore. What can he do? He can shoot. Straight at Schmeichel. Lay back to Gary Neville. Neville's ball in. Taken by James. Now this is Fowler. Berger. Collymore. Collymore gets away from his man, does he? No, he doesn't. And the referee pulls it back. It's a free kick to Liverpool. Good play by Collymore. Good play by Liverpool. Yes, David May. A little over eager there. Eight minutes of extra time remaining. Barnes plays it in. Collymore flicks it on. Fowler won't get there. That's the offside. Apologies, I, I think he's given a, a foul against Robbie Fowler. A little bit harsh that. Good ball out to Beckham, who's caused all sorts of danger this afternoon. Wright will get there, though. Berger. Oh, he's given away by Robbie Fowler. What can United do here? Skulls. Brian McClare. McClare shoots. Good defending by Liverpool. Resolute at the back. Keane. Tackle by Berger unfairly according to the referee a glimmer of an opening for McClare there what a wonderful 120 minutes we have been treated to today 
Steve McManaman's goal in the 92nd minute has given Liverpool an FA Cup replay. It was a real cracker at Villa Park. Played in the right spirit. But after all of that, we're going to have to go again. A game that will live long in the memory. And it's finished. Liverpool won. Manchester United won. Look, you look at a game like today... Um... And, and, and we've got to be cross with ourselves because we had this in the bag. I mean, in my opinion, we've thrown this away. We had this game won. And it, it angers me. Um, but then I look at those players and, and I see they've given everything. And, you know, tactically it's very difficult to play against Dortmund. Even though we probably had the better of the game. I think maybe the players are still getting used to this travelling overseas, flying back, training. It's a routine you have to build yourself into. And I think with the players, it just showed today that uh, a slight bit of fatigue. We've got a good enough and a big enough squad. We'll rotate. We'll go again on Wednesday and we'll give it our all. Well, Manchester United, uh, were they uh, were they true? Did they throw it away in the end? Well, I think Manchester United's problem, they scored and then they just seemed to set back half a yard and they let Liverpool come onto them. And as Liverpool kept pressing for the equaliser, Manchester United had their moments on the breaks, but they didn't take them. Uh, it's a little bit similar to what happened in uh, in Dortmund. You know, they had their chances, they didn't take them. The opposition had the better of the game. I'm sort of more leaning on to the eyes that I think um, uh, Liverpool, to be fair, just kept making changes, kept uh, uh, driving momentum forward. Um, we've got to look at Steve McManaman, who I thought was outstanding today. And that's where, where um, I think Liverpool have got the equaliser from. Oh, talk us through a uh, uh, little bit, Trevor. Well, you've, you've signalled out McManaman, as you think has been a really key player. He is just finding more and more important and key moments in games. And he's really starting to, to really be their talisman that everyone goes to. People have criticised Steve McManaman. He doesn't score enough goals. Well, he is proving us otherwise in this game. I'm really enjoying the way he is. He's in the form of his life. Um, I think, uh, first and foremost, he can keep this up for another year. What an addition to an England side McManaman's going to make. But I also think, um, in terms of Liverpool, he is crucial to them. He's got to be wrapped up in cotton wool and be looked after because he's in the form of his life at the moment confirmation then that we will have a replay that will be midweek here on sports night yes sports night fa cup uh, uh replay it's uh, the very last time you'll see fa cup football on sports night manchester united versus liverpool at villa park we have to have a result that night so extra time is a possibility and so uh penalties very quickly chaps uh who's going to win the semi-final and who's going to join middlesbrough at wembley um it's tough. I really can't pick it. I'd probably say, based on the fact that they played less games, maybe Liverpool. Maybe, um, I kind of think Manchester United have got a big enough squad. I could see them nicking it. I could also see it going all the way. Well, uh, hopefully you'll join us to find out if they do go all the way. For all of us, though, thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll see you again on Sports Night. And then hopefully for the Cup Final. From all of us, bye-bye.